I would just like to start by saying that I was very touched by Congressman Jones' remarks. Um, so it's a, and I just told him thank you very much for leading by example. Um, you, you, you can always tell when someone's speaking from the heart or when they're just reading off a piece of paper. And uh, you know, he truly was speaking from the heart. And military men and women um, proudly serve, selflessly serve, and they do it for many reasons, not the least of which is for each other. And so I also want to say thank you to the Marine Corps Color Guard this morning, which I did out there. But, um, and in doing that, I say thank you to the leadership of this summit and this conference. Because when you place on the front stage the centerpiece of our nation, which is our nation's colors, followed by its nation's leaders, you're sending a message that we're one team, one fight. And so to have our nation's colors on the stage at almost every conference that I do as a spokesperson for the foundation, I kind of always feel like my soldiers have, still have my back, you know what I mean? So, um, so it's, just, it, it's just, it's an awesome setting. It provides the right presence uh, for me to even more boldly and, and more rawly share my comments with you. So I just wanted to start uh, by saying that. Um, I always carry with me, uh, when I'm doing most of these speeches, it's either in my purse, but today I carried it up here with me at my dog tags um, uh, because, you know, I have a slide that says why I'm the spokesperson for the foundation, and I really need to change that slide. I put on there that I'm a spokesperson for the foundation for you, and I am. But I am really a spokesperson for the foundation for the men and women, they're still out there for us. Um, I did serve 27 years in the Army. Blessed, blessed journey to, sit, to serve with America's uh, men and women. Um, you know, heroes in my mind. Um, as a general, just like for those of you who are doctors, just like the congressman just said, you know, he's a public servant. Leaders who, who are out there for themselves are, are not leaders. They may be in the leadership position, but they're not leaders. It is not about us, it is about our patient, it is about our constituency, it is about our soldiers. And I often tease, you know, I would be in the back of a, a, a helicopter, a Black Hawk, flying all over Iraq because the 20,000 soldiers in my command were at 55 different posts, so I was always in the air or on the ground visiting because I wanted to see where they lived, how they performed, et cetera. And you can't, you can't isolate yourself and know those things. So as I went out and about to do that, you know, oftentimes, you know, you'd be shot at being in the, in the helicopter. And, uh, but I was, you know, the, the general flies in the back of the helicopter, and it is the, the soldiers who are the, the crew served gunners uh, sitting in front of you and the pilots you know, at the time that you're getting shot at, they're the ones that are making things happen, okay? Um, it is not the general, okay? I have a nine millimeter pistol right here, and uh, if I'm firing it, uh, we're in a world of hurt. Now, I don't want you to be confused. I'm a country girl from a town with no traffic lights, and I'm a very good shot, okay? There are no live woodchucks up there. <laughs> I, was, I left the Army, I retired from the Army because I had chronic fibromyalgia. And for those of you who know what that is, it's, it's a muscular skeletal disease. Some people don't even believe in it. Some people say it's in your head. I'm like, it may be in my head, but there's about 35 trigger points on my body that it's not in my head. <laughs> you know, you cannot sleep. Uh, you just become a mess. And when the doctors give you prescribed drugs so you can sleep, prescribed drugs so you can work, prescribed drugs, I keep in my wallet a list of 17 different prescription drugs that the Army provided me in the last four years of the Army to keep me going. And at 48 years old, and I intend to live at least to 100, the price of just keeping Becky Halstead out of pain and sleeping, I could go to the, to the chiropractor till I was 500, okay? So um, at any rate, that's why I retired, and when I, and when I did, I, I, I was introduced to the true benefit of chiropractic care. I had gone before, but I had never gone routinely. And it is 
It is education. It is taking care of your whole body. It is not just about fixing your neck or your lower back. And so, you know, I honestly believe every time I go to the chiropractor, not only do I come out feeling physically better, I come out feeling actually emotionally and mentally better. Because if you're not in pain and you're feeling better about your body physically, it automatically kicks into your emotional and mental side. You feel better about yourself. And if you feel better about yourself, probably your marriage gets a little healthier. Huh? For those of you who know that word now. Huh? Okay? Your marriage gets better. You can pay attention to your job better. You see more purpose for your life, which all of us is service to, to nation in some capacity. So in 10 years, we have gotten to about 23% of all the military treatment facilities covered down with uh, uh, chiropractors, either GS civilian or contract. And VA is sitting about the same. And that's, I mean, you know, that's progress. So to me it is, what's the plan now? How can I help to shape a plan that it, it, to get us to the next level? And while we're trying to get to 100% coverage, the ace in the hole is HR 484, which I'm learning a little bit now about the DC stuff. I knew nothing, trust me, really about this. But yesterday sitting down with the senator is to get a companion bill in with the Senate for 484 because that's the gap filler. Because if you can't get it in the military, you can get it through TRICARE. And you know, I have had so many chiropractors come up to me and say, I just want you to know, um, we're giving free care to military men and women for one year after deployment. That's wonderful. That is who cool. That's very cool. So and I think that our young students who are going to be going over and having an opportunity to sit down with the leaders of our nation is that this is what we want to communicate is, let's take care of our national treasures who are out there serving for us. And it's an all-volunteer force, so we could be out there. But we've chosen not to, and they have chosen to, and they deserve that. And our chiropractors deserve to be covered by the TRICARE to, to, to help them. And so as part of a, a um, spokesperson for the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress, I believe the Foundation is leading the effort by giving you tremendous positive press. So, so for those of you who didn't get to see Roll Call and Political this morning, Roll Call, our hero, Jerry Rice, Hall of Famer, is, is right in there in color. You know, someone who just beat all the records and could keep playing and play as an older player for all practical purposes. Um, because of his care for chiropractic. And then in the political, it's just a great advertisement about how chiropractic care works and is validated. Um, and I think that's especially important to our, you know, to us intellectually, okay? I mean, the, the war stories are good and the testimonies are good, but you know, our mind has to accept that this works as well. Okay, so anyhow, the bottom line is, as I tell everybody, you know, are you in or are you out? And I hope that you're in. And I am very uh, proud to be part of the effort and, lead, as I say, leading the charge. And I actually, when I did this, I was thinking of taking the hill like in military terms, and I thought, Ooh, there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of people that work on the hill here today, so take it however you want. Uh, let's just take the hill together. And, um, and I thank you, thank you, thank you for your service. I thank you for what you're doing for each other. And um, just God bless America, and, and please, it, at any moment, uh, you know, something downrange unexpectedly happens. So as you enjoy the comforts and peace of home, um, when you think you're having a hard moment or a hard day, try to take the thoughts off of you, project them someplace else, and I would submit that would be great to do with our men and women. And that's the only reason why I carry these. Because if I think I'm having a bad day, I just grab these and go, I'm not having a bad day. Because on the dog tags that I carry, are the, are the names of the women, names of the men and women and the date time group and the ranks of the men and women I did not bring home and I stay in touch with their families um, and God love them they'll never forget their sons and daughters and they pray we won't either so please don't God bless y'all